Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La Land. We are so excited for the premiere June 1st of Pride and Prejudice Atlanta. We have two of the stars, Juan and Vicky, with us. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank it's you guys for having us. What's up? What's up? How are you guys doing? It's good. sunny out. It's sunny out. We're happy right here. <laughs> sure. uh, I am so excited for this modern take on the classic Pride and Prejudice. I've right. always been a big fan. So tell us about, you know, the spin on Pride and Prejudice Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You like to lead into it, or would you like me to lead into it? Darling, I defer to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is a modern-day take on the classic story, but all the characters and the storyline still remains the same, and it's amazing to see how it still translate today. Mm -hmm. I'm talking from the 1800s. It's a beautiful thing. Well, you specifically play Mr. Darcy, an That's iconic correct. character. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your role and kind of what you brought to it. Yeah, Mr. Darcy is running for Congress in modern day. He comes from New York, hedge fund guy. So, you know, he's got the money, he's got the glitz and glam and all that. And so and the rich aunt. And the rich <laughs> aunt and family. And so that's where the kind of the story kind of begins, where it's easy to judge the book by the cover, right? Mm -hmm. Right off the bat, you see this guy and um, they come to all these conclusions. And the story is about marriage and love as well. Tell us a little I, bit about your character. I play Catherine Darcy, yeah. who's mm -hmm. a moneyed... A uh, controlling, uh, all bets are off. You mm, yeah. cross my nephew, mm. and um, she's a woman that's stuck in a time of a caste system, um, a classicist. Uh, she doesn't approve mm. of Lizzie, uh, played by the lovely Tiffany Hines, mm -hmm. and um, she is about making sure that her nephew becomes a congressional member at all costs. Mm -hmm. So she's ruthless and fabulous, and I love playing her. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a bit ruthless? Because you're certainly fabulous. I mean, as <laughs> not a actress. You're going to make me cross-pollinate two projects. I do have a project that I produce that so we'll talk about that has the title of Ruthless in it. Uh -huh. But um, no, not personally. I am a businesswoman. I am a producer, writer, director. Director, um, and I think we have to be careful as women to, uh, you know, be uh, defined mm -hmm. as business women and nothing else. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I think it takes a tremendous amount of um, uh, grit and expertise to be in this town and to have longevity. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to just pride myself on working with excellent actors. Mm -hmm. Um, directors such as Rhonda Baraka, mm -hmm. who directed Pride and Prejudice, um, and others, our, our, our A&E Lifetime family um, is uh, predominantly led by women, and so it was really a pleasure nice. to work in that environment um, on Pride and Prejudice nice. Atlanta. So we're yeah, talking about beautiful. Parkinson's Law and basically how we condense time if we want things to actually get done. We actually have to like really condense it. We actually get more done. Yes. And I think that in Hollywood, we have to really get clear of what our intention is, what we're here for, because Hollywood can just take our lives over, right? So what would you say your guys' main intention is? What's your, what's your legacy? What's your, what's your why? A reason why we're doing this? Yeah, what's your intention for being Driving here? behind yeah. this? I was actually having a conversation this morning on the way over here, and I think it's an amazing opportunity to tell story, mm -hmm. right? and to be a part of the narrative of storytelling because I remember being influenced by so much TV, film, athletes, the people around that we looked up to, and now I'm stepping into, I feel like I'm stepping into the light of being one of those in the eye. And so to be able to take in the opportunity to tell story, mm -hmm. I think is the great opportunity so that's ahead of us right now, no. at least for myself, and I know you're doing it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, the why for me is to pass forward knowledge. Right. Um, I have a series um, that started streaming last Thursday in its third season, The Rich and the Ruthless. It's a dramedy soap opera. Mm -hmm. Love that. The Rich and the Ruthless. Mm -hmm. Yes, on UMC TV. Um, but it's about passing forward knowledge and hiring others that you know are qualified in all aspects from mm -hmm. costume design to set design to writing, directing, producing, etc. Showrunners. So it's extremely important to me to take my body of work and to be able to pass it forward, move other storytelling forward. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about community. I mean, if we can't work together, you know, um, and tell different perspectives, then what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Like, this is a whole new environment for me to be in. Mm -hmm. This whole idea of streaming talk show is so 
brilliant. Mm. Um, it's efficient. Talk mm -hmm. about squeezing, mm -hmm. making um, hay while the sun's shining mm -hmm. really fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This is it. Like There's no double take. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey, I'd love to ask you about your book. You're a New York Times bestselling author. Yes. Congress has given you all its accolades. What is the mission behind the women who raised women? Um, well, first, I want to say May is National Foster Care Awareness Month, another reason why I'm so proud to be a part of Pride and Prejudice Atlanta. Yeah. It's a special time for me. Um, I'll be speaking with James Comey um, uh, next month. Uh, the Women Who Raised Me is about identifying it's an homage uh, for women, ordinary women, not necessarily my foster parents, but women, my teachers, my ballet teachers, um, your mother, um, your aunt, who raised me um, out of 18 years in foster care. And I've never left that community. I continue to work with court-appointed special advocates and other groups, um, not only domestically, but internationally. Mm. Um, it's about those women and their stories and people who every day sacrifice mm. um, to give back. Um, and so Catherine Darcy, just to loop it all together, <laughs> Catherine Darcy is a give back gal, yeah. but she spoils her yes, nephew yes, she over here. <laughs> I love that. Well, Juan Antonio, you are certainly multi hyphenate. Right? Yeah. Director, cinematographer, yes. model, yes. actor. Yes. And it all started with the breakout role in Beyonce. Hey now. <laughs> hey. hey now. True Let's story. talk about the Queen Bee for a second. Yeah, I married Beyonce on <laughs> film. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you tell. You tell. Caught up to speed. Uh, best thing I never had. <laughs> My first large project on that scale and got the opportunity to work with her. And that was an amazing stepping stone for me. Just the the experience of working with someone at that level at that point in time really solidified a few things for myself and then moving quickly past that that transcended to getting tv spots and role after role and so now leading to pride and prejudice uh, one of the leading characters in the film we just wrapped the film with mark Wahlberg, good joe bell uh good trouble on freeform recurring on that so it really opened the door it helped and, and what is it like what's it like working with somebody like a beyonce what is it what does it oh, do to your man. psyche well, she's so humble and down to earth that that she she was very warm and welcoming, right? So there was no intimidation or any of that stuff. But you, I also got to see how efficient she was. Show up to set, boom, ready to roll, right in it. And she has some ability to turn it on mm. right away. And so working with that um, takes me to the next level mm -hmm. because I have to match that. And I have to ask, you know, speaking of the women who raised her, the women that you've been working with have an incredibly strong, iconic. Oh, man, it doesn't stop. <laughs> like, including Vicky, though. You yeah. know. So, who are some of the women you would like to thank or have credited to making you the man that you are? Yeah, all the women that I'm working with, even today, mm -hmm. they feel like family to me, right off the bat initially, because they remind me of my upbringing, being raised by my mother, my aunt, my grandmother. It's the same type of spirit and energy behind it. So it's very uh, instant, right? Where they like, jump right into it. And so that's obviously mom, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> she will be. Said mom's love. Yeah, man, oh, she's the catalyst of all of it. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we are gonna try and take a look at Pride and Prejudice Atlanta okay, let's do right that. now, premiering this Saturday, June 1st on Lifetime. Find it the wife, find it the good thing. Amen. <laughs> Everybody knows that a single man with money needs to get himself a wife. I have five beautiful and very single daughters. Will Darcy returns from New York. You ready to ascend the Darcy throne? Steer clear of that Benham girl, Lizzie. A church goer and single? Which one of you girls wants it? <laughs> man like that doesn't say single for long. Hey, who knows? Maybe he doesn't want a hoochie mama. Nah. You are unlike any woman I ever met before. I need your word that you'll never speak to Will again. Are you threatening me? I don't threaten. Are you gonna let your pride get in the way of a lifetime of happiness? You're a good man, Will. Pride and Prejudice Atlanta premieres June 1st, part of Book to Screen on Lifetime. Hey. <laughs> you guys must be so proud. Yeah. Absolutely. What's it like uh, seeing yourself? It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
Everybody, it's got a little different experience, you know? Some people like it, some people don't. Man, I'm so into the work that when I look at it, I'm watching so much. It's not about looking at myself. I'm seeing the cinematography, I'm seeing mm -hmm. the sound, I'm seeing the choices. I'm looking at so much that I, unless I've distracted, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something right. Right. Going, I don't notice myself. Unless I'm like, oh God, why yeah. did I do that? I, I, I echo that. It, it's a yeah. lot of fun because it's such a, clearly it's an ensemble cast. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you know all the work that goes into, and we know the uh, production company, Swirl Films, and of yeah. course all the people from mm -hmm. uh, Lifetime. So, right. And the director, Rhonda Baraka, that was the sixth time that I worked with her. So, oh, wow. And I was reunited with Keisha Knight. Well, anyway, mm -hmm. it was just really cool. And Jack A. Harry yeah, and yeah. Reggie Bill Johnson. And you know, like, it's like, uh, it's yes. like the cookout. <laughs> <laughs> I right. feel like so something fun. like your ancestors are there rooting you on like yes we're here we're claiming it we're you know this time in history when everyone has a voice every color every size everything and it's just a celebration for all of us quite frankly you yeah know? Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing because I never really looked at um I wasn't raised in to see color right so mm -hmm. I know it's kind of crazy but I really don't see that but I think this take on the film is amazing because it is going to bring in a new viewership yes. to the mm -hmm. story, yeah. mm -hmm. which yes. I think it's amazing because it's going to show us that we can take any story mm -hmm. and flip it any way we want. It exactly. all translate if we stick, if there's something under the surface to it, because the under the surface is what we all still relate to. Right. Exactly. Love, marriage, money, power, all that stuff. We're, we're dealing with socialism every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Universal right. themes. Yeah. That. If there was one personality trait, you know, of course, in addition to being beautiful and talented and all those good things. If there was one personality trait that you would attribute that you would attribute your success to, what would you say that trait is? It's one thing. Discipline. Really? Ooh, Ooh. you took my word. <laughs> Are you too? Yeah. Uh, tenacity. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It all goes in the same pot. You Who gotta... taught you that? Or was that something you developed on your own? Well, discipline, I'm originally from Maine. Uh, my foster mother had a 60 acre farm. Mm. And the discipline of being obedient to Mother Nature is very real. Um, and then the, my, my classical ballet training with American Ballet Theater. So I'm very disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. underrated. It's like a negative word that people think. But it's such a positive word if you use it for, for what you do want, right? Yeah. To work towards building those habits and stuff, right? How about yeah. you? Yeah, I think it's easy. I, I got mine from the theater in New York well of uh, William Esper, the late William Esper gave me a lot of dis discipline and insight into just sticking and focusing on my path. And I'm from the Midwest, so mm -hmm. a blue collar mentality is kind of how we were raised. Just get up, go to work, yeah, get done, sleep, repeat. <laughs> That's just kind of like the way it goes. Yeah. I love it so much. Well, it's so beautiful. Tell people where they can find your personal journey as well. Ah, you can meet me on social media at, at Victoria Rowell on Instagram and Twitter. That's really me. I <laughs> uh, so join me uh, on Lifetime. Join me on UMC TV. Um, you can find me there and read the book. We have to. We have to ask about the hat, though. I wear a hat every day. You do. I was raised by a woman who wore hats. I love that. And I Beautiful. wear a hat every single day. Uh, this one is from, I think it's called Hatters on Melrose, but I wear it every day. Beautiful. Hey. It's her signature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can find me at Juan Antonio on all the Instagram handles. I wear a hat often. I was going to say, what about your hat, man? <laughs> I'm not giving any <laughs> shout outs because it wasn't free. Right, right. It's sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a hashtag sponsor life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want to get some free shout outs. Right. Hey, that's no, I just want to say that. Okay, you can tune in until Lifetime this Saturday, June 1st, to see Pride and Prejudice Atlanta. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more on Good Morning Live. Right. <laughs>